fasting, that's probably the number one thing I want to talk about today, but in general too. There's so much more that I need to get to and update about, especially, you know, the important things that I haven't been um, actively sharing my, my more recent experiences with this past year or so, but I've had a lot of reasons, which I'll go into another time, that I've kind of taken a break in 2021. And it was for the best and it worked out. It was all intuition based as far as how I felt about things and what I should be doing and focused on and not focused on was the biggest thing, you know, as far as uh, I think a lot of people could have really done well by doing the sim a similar thing when it comes to choosing what not to focus your time on compared to what to focus your time on. What you decide to focus your time on uh, it could be, you know, anything you choose of a good variety could be a good decision, you know, even if it's just something that seems like a waste of time. But there's so many things that are just totally not worth your time and energy and effort and um, so many better things or, or anything else to focus on. But you, you know what I'm talking about when it comes to uh, if you're on the, the worst um, social media sites, say like Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, those things are just pure poison, and they have been, especially since 2020 started. They've been only getting worse and worse, and they should be done away with the natural way by us deciding to do away with it and that we don't need it and to delete our accounts. That's what I did back in 2020, and it has paid off in big dividends. I still kind of regret it because I was involved in groups. Uh, private and uh, public groups and even secret groups where people could be able to get together and discuss certain things but you know what I decided I'm kind of done preaching to the choir because I, I'm not really part of the choir anyways I'm not I'm not a hippie or anything just a normal guy who really 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 wants to take really good care of his health and um, the subject to talk about today fasting is a huge huge part of that and something I think is needs to be kind of emphasized and should be important collectively, globally, as far as uh, the near future, especially. I think more people should uh, consider start if you're able to. I know it's not for everybody. It could be, but it's not going to be. But I think some people are much, much more capable of doing, of making it. Uh, so for me, it's been uh, over six years of basically a fasting focused lifestyle. I started off a little over six years ago with my first initial two or three fasts, and those were literally torture as far as how you feel, the energy you don't have. <laughs> the energy you have is very minimal. I remember one point, I think it was during my first one, where I was, uh, I was only on like a couple days or three days or something, and I was laying on the ground and I literally would have only been able to get up to save my life. It was, I was that just weak and lethargic and tired. So it can be really super freaking tough, you know, at first. But it's just so amazing. And that's, I think, one of the biggest things I want to emphasize today is the differences with how you feel in the initiation phase compared to the advanced stages where I'm at right now. Now, six years sounds like a long time to be doing a fasting focused lifestyle. Now, what is that exactly? That just means throughout the year, all throughout the year, 365 days, or let's say 52 weeks a year, you have, throughout that year, you have planned, not planned fast, but you plan on doing a certain amount of lengthier fast. If that's two days, three days, two weeks, three weeks, whatever, you know, okay. Everyone's a little different with their with how they'll do it, the way I do it and the way I've done it. I've done a lot of lengthy fasts, but I also supplement, or I also have as a foundation um, eating once per day. And that makes a, a huge, huge, huge difference with being able to, so... During 2020, I don't think I fasted very much. Um, I still kept to eating once per day. So if you think about it, I probably had 365 meals or less in that year, even if I didn't fast, you know, or do any lengthier fast. So on in a year, 
that I do a lot of lengthier fasts, there would be probably around just barely over 300 meals or so within one year. It, it is something that the human body is capable, of, totally capable of doing. And so what major difference I wanna also get back to and focus on is how you feel in the advanced stages. Because if you're kind of weary or scared or not too sure about this, it sounds too dangerous or something, trust me, it is not. There are so many people who do this and you could take it from me. It is something that the body getting, gets used to. It's a, it gets to also be more of a reliance on different and better energy sources, meaning air. Like if you, one thing you gotta do when you, especially when you're first fasting and you'll learn maybe in other fasts or maybe you won't, but just if you don't know, you can learn it now is you definitely want to focus on better, proper breathing, especially later into the fast. And in particular, of course, during your first fast, I think it'll help greatly. You are gonna be very, very much more dependent on getting energy from, you know, the air, from, I mean, think about it. This, that is the main source of, uh, of your energy anyways, the very, very first one, you know. You shouldn't have to rely on, you know, fats and sugars and stuff like that to, to go. There's, you know, the ketone system works much better and everything, but there is something more to it than that. Um, the body gets used to it and it starts utilizing the system better. Plus the detoxification processes that go on during the first few fasts. Now you'll still have detox symptoms in every other fast that you'll do if you're only doing them every few months or so, because it only takes a little while for the intestines to start, you know, accumulating crap along the walls. And so, like I mentioned, I haven't, so the last couple years, I haven't, I haven't done as many lengthier fasts except for the last few months. I think back in November, I did like a, a five day, a three, a, Somewhere around between October and December, I did a four day fast and a three day fast. At the moment, I am almost through six full days. And so the, the uh, yeah, the energy systems are amazing though at this point. Okay, so I had a couple fasts. Those two fasts that I did, I wasn't too sure, especially the first one this winter, how I was going to feel. Though I've kind of gone through this before and I knew that I'd probably be surprised, like I have been surprised before of how good I felt despite not having done a lengthier fast in a long time. Part of that's due to eating once per day. But it show, it really goes to show that you could easily, you know, after you get through the first few, two or three fasts or so, for most people, it might take more for other people that are on, is much more unhealthy, have a lot more detox and cleaning up and purging of, of just stuff that's collected and sort, you know, when the, body gets to a point too where it doesn't have places to do things you know like it, it there's a reason why we look so gross when we get really 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 old it's because of that you're naturally gonna have wear and tear to the skin and to the body on the outside and everything but everything inside and even outside should be working a lot much better in the advanced ages and stages of life and stuff so I was getting back to oh just way too much I get way too caught off track. So also getting back to the differences of the energy system. So today um, I'm almost, today is a day where I go and do something that requires a lot of energy as far as physical energy. And so that's where I also implemented and remembered to um, really, really consciously focus on my, my breathing, deep, deep exhales through the nose and out through the mouth, you know, as I was doing the excruciating part of my day. So I shouldn't have had enough energy to do this because I usually barely have enough to do it normally. So I go to a book sale once a week and I get a ton of books, usually about between 80 and 100 on this day per week. This, this week though, since it was, uh, they're closed most of the week and they had a lot of extra books today, I got four bags and they're they're big bags um i don't know if you've seen a whole foods bag before see i even tape and reinforce them so they could get that many more books into the bag they're literally packed almost to the brim close to the top they're tall bags um and so that fits about that's a lot of weight it's a uh, between two bags think about how much uh, 
think about carrying a stack of books or whatever. Now think about how much about 80 to 100 would be. And so I take basically what I walked back with. You can't really tell. This is full. Everything in here, see how packed it is? Everything in there, all the po other small pockets and side pockets in the world as well are full of books and these two things. Now I'm used to doing this because I do this about 50 weeks per year and done it the last few years or so, but it's still tough. You get stronger and stronger and it actually helps with the running as well, kind of builds a little strength. It's unintended exercise, which is super awesome to get. And that's another thing I'd advise for other people to try to get. Try to get exercise that is outside of your realm of exercise. You know, walk to the store if you have to. Walk more often, go running, stuff like that. You know, or not, well actually, th those aren't good examples. Things that you could do maybe, like at, hopefully at work or something to get some exercise and whatnot. But stuff that you did and you didn't consider exercise. Like I do that, every, so I do that every week. And I sometimes forget, it's a damn good workout. I'm super tired by the time I get back. But it's a lot of weight. And I had four bags I was thinking of, since I hadn't eaten in so long, maybe I'll leave some of them behind, carry just one bag back. They would understand, they see me all the time. But I had four bags, I didn't, I'm always, uh, I'm one of those people that doesn't like to ask for favors or help too often. I feel uncomfortable doing it so I decided to only ask them to hold two bags because I there's no way I could physically take four bags back it's about a mile walk about probably a, just under a mile so you can get the idea there's two stoplights one on the each very far end so there's a long stretch or whatever where you walk without stopping pretty much and sometimes you walk without stopping if you happen to catch the green lights as well so it could turn into a whole stretch where I don't even stop and I'm holding on to the bags and to the full backpack or whatever. So it's a really good workout. It's similar to what they do in the Marines, but this is actually a lot less weight than what they do. They do some crazy stuff with uh, the amount of weight they carry and trek up hills for like 20 miles or so. It's pretty crazy. Um, they call it humping or whatever. They call it a hump or whatever. And people literally fall over and have to be carried the rest of the way by the, you know, the scout leaders and stuff like that. Anyway, so this is similar to that, but on a very small, you know, a fraction uh, degree of difficulty compared to that, but it's still really difficult. I'm not a big guy. I mean, I weigh in the 120s. I'm even less right now since I fasted, so I'm carrying a little less weight, so that kind of helps, you know, as far as carrying less weight back. But I haven't eaten in close to six days. I thought, wow, this is going to be, might be really tough or whatever. I don't usually do this very often. I try not to time it that way, and I don't have done too many lengthy fasts or whatever in a while so I wasn't sure what to expect but I walked back there was two red lights so that gave me two chances to stop at that stretch that was about two-thirds to a three-quarters of a mile walked the entire thing back and sweated less which is crazy now at this point in the fast I am a little less hydrated because the first few days the first two and a half days I really focused on hydrating myself but I kind of overdid it I got to the point, you could get to the point to where you just start drinking, you know, you're drinking too much water, too much juice, too much urine, and then it's just like, oh, I'm tired. My body just gets kind of tired of constantly having to do that. So you take a little bit of a break, but then you notice the urine starts to get a little bit less clear and everything, but that's part of also the detox process as well because you're gonna have more concentrated, your blood's gonna be a tiny bit more concentrated when you're going through minor detox or cleanses or whatever like I'm going through right now in the later days or whatever as far as bowel movements you have more on the first few days and only maybe a little bit smaller ones here and there on the, in the advanced stages of fasting if you're a beginning fast if you're beginning if you're a beginner fast if you're starting fasting you're gonna have the most crazy bowel movements you have ever seen or smelled or could even or heard so you know turn on the fan make sure no one hears or smells or anything if you're do your first fast and do it do it alone make sure you get you know plenty of opportunity to rest and sleep and it's going to be tough you're not going to be able what i did walking all those books back and doing it almost pretty much just as easy in some aspects it was easier like i said i wasn't sweating i'm usually sweating on the way back and i was wearing heavy clothes and it's a little warmer out when I go, it's cold, and by the time I leave, it warms up considerably because it's at 9 a.m., so, you know, by the time I leave, it's a lot warmer, and so I'm usually sweating because of the extra layers that I stupidly, well, not stupidly, I had to wear to go over, but 
this time I wasn't sweating, it's crazy. Part of that's due to a little lack of hydration. Not completely, that's all I'm doing is drinking during the fast. So, part of it is also due to just, it wasn't that difficult. You get to a point to when you fast, you start having as much, if not, at times, more energy. Now, it depends on what you're doing. If you think you're gonna start power lifting during your fast, I think you're gonna fool yourself. You're really fooling yourself. And anybody, and nobody would think of doing that, right? But as far as stuff that goes on up here, and organizational stuff, stuff that takes energy, just minimal amount of energy for long periods of time. You could go all day and stuff. I have to find stuff to do and it's crazy. You get more done, you have more time on your hand, that's for sure. And if you're someone who eats three meals a day, you're gonna have a ton of time on your hand. Um, there's that much less time shopping possibly. You, uh, and then also, and that was the case for me. Um, I don't wanna keep stuff that will, my excuse sometimes is, oh, this is gonna go bad soon or whatever. And that's that was almost my excuse to stop this fast this time, but I didn't. I'm gonna go a little longer. We'll see how long it goes at almost six days right now. So it'd be fun to maybe keep going a little bit longer. And um, I got the whole summer to run and everything, even though there's some nice weather coming up. I luckily fasted when the weather was bad. That was a good choice. The timing was perfect. Um, absolutely perfect. Yeah, I started on the 22nd. And so, um, yeah, really uh, the timing and um, just as far as intuition of doing these things, that will also kick in as well. So anyways, yeah, if you didn't know, that's what I do. I sell books. I have a ton of books. This is uh, what's behind me right here is just um, a little portion of my own personal collection. Some of these like on this shelf up here is more of my display books. Up above, there's a ton of stuff. Below, there's some stuff and everything. We'll go look at that another time. But yeah, um, I'll probably go back today and carry back the other two bags. That's what's so crazy. I could do it. I only, off, only also got a little under five hours of sleep. I sleep less when I fast. This whole week has been like five, six hours. There was one day that was like eight or nine hours. That was a couple days ago. It was like a catch up day. So that kind of even things out maybe a little bit if you get that much extra sleep or whatever. Definitely more relaxed, more talkative, more energy, uh, more, you know, you get also a little more, even though you're more up and hyper and active, you know, it really doesn't seem like it should be that way. It should be drowsy, it should be tired, and that's how it will be during the first fast. But this is where you could get to, and a lot of people have the opportunity to get to if they wanted to and not be so utterly dependent on food. It is amazing how dependent we are on it. And if the shit hits the fan, we're gonna be in really, really, really big trouble unless people, unless, it might only take a small uh, percentage of people, of us, to be willing to do something similar eating once per day. Does that sound that bad? That's something that some people might have to do if something really bad were to happen. You never wanna think about things in terms of you know, bad things happening or whatever, but not being prepared is utterly stupid. And it is such a nice liberation and freedom not to have the dependencies and know that if something really horrible were to happen, you'd be perfectly fine, you know? Actually, you might even be more in your, you might end up being more in your element once you get used to all the different changes in lifestyle compared to the ways of utter dependency on conveniences and such. Um, when you start, you know, only depending on yourself and your, your basically your body to take care of your, your health and not have to, you know, use, need any more outside sources. It's a huge liberation. It's, it's the biggest freedom, freedom of all. You know, you could, you could still keep living your nice life if that's the way it is. Or if things get really, really bad, you could easily transition to a, what would normally be, you know how some people go from uh, riches to rags? And it's just, it's just too hard of a fall for them and they just, you know, completely go into the gutter and, and uh, life's never the same in their perspective again because they had it so good. But now things are so bad. And that is a really, really tough, you know, uh, thing to fall from, you know. That's a huge gap, you know. Um, 
going from rags to riches, I have personally a different uh, opinion on, on that. I don't think it's all that it's uh, made up to be. But the opposite, good Lord, there, I don't think there's anybody, who, too many people that are in the regular world that could really survive that. So many people uh, kill themselves too when they lose their money. You hear about all those people who jump out of buildings after the stock market plummets or whatever. It's crazy what people do based on money. But I've been there when I've lost a lot of money in one way or another. And it does hit hard for a second or whatever. But when your whole life crumbles, it's nice to know that, you know, there's another way of living, a better way of living, you know, where you're not so dependent on money either. Um, and once you start becoming less dependent on money and, and have it, see, some people have money literally comes to them, is attracted to them. It's like a magnet. They think about money a lot, but the difference is they think about it in a lot different way than you do. You don't understand it, and neither do they. I barely understand it, but it's just something that occurs naturally to them. They just know how to see some. Yeah, it, I'll, that's a, a subject for a whole nother day. But there is a reason why some people, the majority of people who strive for money, and really, you know, lick their chops about it. Um, they don't get it. It never happens for them. They never get that opportunity. They never are the big winner or whatever. And never come to a fort, you know, um, an opportunity. It never. It's crazy how the universe works. But this is true. And if that is you, if that's you, if you've never had that luck, I would personally advise is just not that it'll turn the opposite. But if you ditch, you know, that mindset. And I'm not saying you'll you'll get money. But it'll be it'll be better for overall for you, of course, in the long run. So there was so much more to get to. I'll think I'll keep it there for now because I'm kind of rambling on, talking way too much. But um, yeah, I got a ton of great books today. I'd love to show you some of the books I got behind me. I've actually got some really yeah a bunch of cool shelves, but that's for another time. That would take forever. So um, any questions, uh, leave in the comment section. I'm free to answer. Sorry I've been away for so long, but it's been for the better. You some of people out there you do need to do this um got to figure out you yourself have to figure out intuitively when's the best time to do that though some people are more um influenced negatively by other people the simple solution is just not being around people and that includes social media you don't want to you want to stay tr if you only way you can really stay true to yourself in today's world to just yeah, um, to be, if you're not aware of it, it would have to be to cut out everything. Now, I think I could go back to those other things and do it a lot differently, a lot better, and, and whatnot. You know, whether that be physical, social interaction, or social media type of inter internet social interaction, I'd probably do it better. But I started to almost enjoy my time by myself. There's uh, no one better to be with, and that's the same for you. I used to always have to be dependent on being around other people, friends. That's all I wanted to do was hang out with friends and have a good time and stuff. Throughout my entire 20s, that was it, you know, and of course before that, you know, when you're a kid. Um, I kept that for a while, but um, yeah, sometimes those friends, and trust me, when you, when you start doing things that are right in your life, um, that Garfield and Friends song is, you'll find that Garfield and Friends song, the intro, if you don't know what I'm talking about, look it up, is completely false. The Friends friends won't be there for you. You have to be there for you. You can't depend on them. Once, you gotta expect them, any of your friends, I know, uh, Jim or George or Jeffrey, no, 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 not them, yeah, them. If you do something, it irks them or they think of you in a different way they will ditch you and never talk to you never speak to you again don't believe not I'm not saying all of them will do that you just never know which one of them will do that and if you start doing certain things like for me there was one thing I did change particularly in my life where a whole bunch of people well just about everybody thought of me completely different who knew me who had known me before that but a couple people in particular, it, it seemed to uh, do something more. And it was amazing. I never thought that, wow, you know, well, that really taught me a lesson that you cannot ever rely on anyone else. They are just another version of yourself that needs your assistance, pretty much. So 
don't depend on them either. This, I guess this whole video is about dependency, uh, basic things, you know, but we were talking about fasting mostly. Questions about fasting, please ask me. I'd love for more people to get on this train, and I think it's one that needs more people on it for the betterment of everybody. I mean, really think about it. There's, I could go on and on and on and on and on about this, but maybe we'll go on and on about it in the comments section, okay?